Hi, everyone. Happy day one of of DevComp. Thank you guys so much for coming. You have probably seen a lot of our branding outside about equal access for everyone. And generally, we mean that a good game can come from anywhere and anyone. And oftentimes, we're talking about our solutions. We just had one on WebShop. We have others later on backend um, funding and more of our solutions. But one thing that also means is knowledge sharing. It's data, it's research, and Probably one of the top things I love about my job is the people that we get to connect and meet with. Um, so I'm honored to be joined on stage. What? You're so far away. <laughs> we are far. Sorry. Um, one thing I want to know, we were going to have Alexander Fernandez join us, unfortunately, and this is probably relatable for a lot of us. He had some travel woes. He had His plane had some mechanical problems. He wasn't able to get in. He will be here tomorrow. So if anyone was looking forward to meeting him, I would recommend reaching out. Um, but without further ado, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Yeah. So uh, first of all, thank you, Ixola, for, for having us here. Uh, I'm excited to, to talk about this. It's, it's, so for me, it's a very exciting topic. Uh, but I'm Nick Grant, uh, the CEO of 80 Level. Uh, if you don't know 80 Level, we are a, a content media house um, distributing content as it relates to game. So go give us a follow on on all of our socials. Um, you'll you'll find some really great great information there. Yeah, and uh, my name is Casper Weber. I am from Copenhagen, Denmark, and I am the founder and CEO of Beyond Creative. We are a Fortnite game studio, so we're working with a lot of brands, bringing them into those 400 million players that are playing Fortnite. And we've done it for the last three and a half years. So yeah, super excited to be here and thanks for showing up and for having us. Okay, let's get started. Cool. There we go. Um, so we're going to start with a broad topic. Um, and I'm not looking for a dictionary definition here. Um, but more when we look at how much the gaming industry has evolved over the years and where it's going in the future. Um, how do you guys define a game? Nick, let's start with you. I think it's 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 an absolutely interesting question. You know, Casper will we'll get into kind of I think why this this question is posed. But I think games are anything that we can play, right? Uh, whether it's a board game, whether it's tag with our friends, whether it's um, you know solitaire, right? Those are all games. Those are things that we get to interact with. Um, the 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 thing that I love about games the most is that they do they do attach to us, right? We, we do build relationships with different types of games. Um, but additionally they engage with us, right? So we play solitaire. So we're not just sitting there bored, right? We play solitaire. So we have something to do. Um, and to me, that underlying ethos of having something to do, creating engagement is, is a critical part to, to any game. Yeah. And I, personally, I would say coming from a Fortnite background, I'm sure we have different, different, you know, explanations for or definitions definitions for what a game is but personally i would say that it's it's anything where you know you can get some level of score or an objective that you can get closer to and that might be super simple like when you don't have internet on your google browser or it might be you know something more extensive um yeah yeah i think it's i think it's interesting you know as we we talk about ugc right um obviously fortnite has i think over a million islands inside of their ecosystem probably yeah right and so you know, I, I obviously we have to look at that. Those are kind of games inside of games. Uh, they're individual games. Do we classify those as kind of their own games, right? Like that to me is super interesting. Um, I think what we see brands kind of getting into, and I know we'll, we'll dive into it a little bit more here in a minute, but we see brands getting into, right? I'm a, I'm a 90s kid, so I grew up with with like Annoy the Noid, right? The video game from, from Domino's, um, the 7-Up Surfer, right? Like those are all very nostalgic video games as, as brands. And so, you know, they're not inside, obviously, the Fortnite ecosystem, but those are brands experimenting with gaming. And I think we see a lot of that inside of UGC platforms like Fortnite, where they're building their own games, right? They're building their own message, just leveraging kind of an audience. That's true. Games within games, but also like small niche game modes coming out of existing games that you might find, right? Very interesting. For the next one... um who are the new generation of gamers? So when we look at the world population, 70% of the population falls under either millennial, Gen Z, or Gen Alpha. And we know kind of all the stats. We like to make fun of the different generations. Uh, but, but who who are they? Not so much in terms of age or anything like that. But what are you guys seeing? What are they doing? What do they care about? How does that differ from previous generations? I, I can take this one. This one. <laughs> So from a Fortnite background, I'm not sure how many of you know Fortnite or have seen Roblox games or anything alike, but 
the new generation of gamers, I definitely think, you know, these sort of like, what do you call them, islands and minigames are catering to, you know, the very colorful, very much in your face with notifications. But what I, why, I, why I'm saying that is because I think the new generation of gamers is just like all of us here, except they're growing up with technology in a way that we haven't. They're having the short form, they're scrolling, we know their attention spans incredibly short. And I'm pretty sure um, that some of you all growing up have played games where there might not have had a, there might not have been a lot of other games that you could have selected if there was something coming out in that game that you didn't like. Um, but nowadays, and I, I'm sure we have some data that backs it, there's more games than ever before published every single year. And if you're looking at the Fortnite Roblox platform, you can quite literally find every single game that you could want to play. So I think the future like generation of gamers are going to be a lot harder to retain in terms of building the trust and making them continue to play your game for a longer period of time. It's like the the TikTokification of, of YouTube, right? Like their attention spans are so short, they don't even want to watch YouTube videos anymore, right? They they just flip, flip, flip. Um, yeah, I think th this one speaks personally to me. I've got I've got three three boys, um, six, nine, and thirteen. Um, so you know, from Roblox all the way to Call of Duty. Um, and you know, as far as who they are, the thing that's most intriguing to me when we when we talk about gamers, you know, one is we're kind of losing that distinction of a gamer, right? So back in the day, like gamers, you had to be a hardcore gamer in order to be called a gamer, right? Like live in your parents' basement, wear all black. Like that was, that was the thing, right? Now everybody's a gamer, right? Like 94, I think it's 94% of gen alphas, which is a weird stat because they're not even done being born yet. Uh, but 94% of gen alphas consider themselves game enthusiasts, right? Um, so they're not going quite as far as to call themselves gamers, but, but they are talking about how, how, you know, they enjoy gaming, right? It's, it's kind of their go-to. It's their thing that they can do. A lot more mainstream and socially acceptable compared to five, 10, 15 years, even longer. C correct. Yeah. Before it was going to rot our brains out. Now, now it actually helps us. Right. Um, and we've seen those, those case studies. So, uh, yeah, I think they're the other, the other piece that sticks to me here with this, this next generation of gamers is their, their, their desire to not dis distinguish between the, the value of a digital item and the value of a, of a, of a physical item. Right. So for me going to school is if I didn't have the coolest clothes, I wasn't the coolest kid. Right. Um, now it, and it's kind of this double-edged sword is if if you go into fortnite and you don't have the coolest skin well you're not the coolest kid right and so we have to be careful with that but there is value there that is associated with with digital items and i also think they gradually will have a lot more purchasing power because i remember when i was doing my very first transaction in a game called hapo i'm not sure if anyone anyone knows it um, but my parents thought it was going to be a, a, a physical good that i was going to get mailed and i'm like no it's it's living in the game and, you know, the new generations coming up, I'm sure they're going to have parents that are way more familiar with in-app purchases and whatnot. So, yeah, a lot of purchasing power from this generation as well. Um, so the next question is near and dear to my heart. Before Ixola, I worked on many brands, franchise brands. Um, they were usually in the entertainment space, so it was kind of a natural connection into gaming and to take that character and IP and to make a game. But I think we all can look at now there's brands in automotive, fashion, consumer packaged goods that are trying to get into this industry. And it's kind of a question of, well, what do we do? What do we do? They just know they want to be there. It's the shiny object. So what do you guys think is driving that though? And what does that mean for either and maybe a natural fit brand, but someone that doesn't really necessarily fall under that kind of standard? Yeah, th this one... I love this one. Um, you know, what's what's driving it, I think, is eyeballs, right? Eyeballs drive everything. Um, and we look at, you know, the Super Bowl, which for a four-hour period of time garners 123 million people, right? Um, Fortnite and Roblox do twice of that on a monthly basis. They're they're pushing that many users. So it, it's eyeballs. Um, you know, it's no different than going back and, and looking at Facebook or, or MySpace or even Instagram, right? When When some of you guys are old enough to remember that there wasn't brands in those spaces. There brands didn't have Facebook pages. Right. And then they did. And it was just a page that sat there and they thought, well, why aren't my audience interacting with me? Right. And so I think we're getting to that point now with, with brands that they see, okay, you got to do more than just make a game. Like you have to get people to, to interact with it. Right. So whether it's on Fortnite, whether it's in Roblox, whether it's a, a, an owned world created, created world, you have to actually, you do something with that. You have to promote it to, to get, to get the eyeballs to continuously come back. Um, 
Yeah, I think attention and eyeballs is just one thing, but also like the barrier of entry over the last few years as, you know, building a Fortnite or Roblox game, I think it's no secret that that's way lighter than building an actual game. So it's it's way more accessible for a lot of brands if they actually want to, you know, engage with a gaming audience in a way that they haven't been able to in the past. I assume it's a lot harder to integrate into a double AA, A, triple A game compared to building a Fortnite island. Yeah, and and other and, and it doesn't even have to be wholehearted in that regard, right? Like they can do other things. I don't know if anybody's familiar with what Burger King did with Steven Edge um for, for FIFA, right? They they purposely sponsored the worst team in the league, um, and then promoted all around that, right? And and Steven Edge had more players playing with the Stevenage team inside of FIFA than, than any other team inside that platform, right? Because Burger King was giving away free burgers if you took a screenshot of scoring a goal, right? So that type of marketing is just bananas, right? And it and it's huge, but it's it's amazing that a brand like Burger King can tap into an audience, right? A shared audience, really, with these games um, and promote their own product while also helping to promote both Stevenage and the and FIFA itself. So there's a little extra depth and it doesn't have to be a full-on video game it can be these small pieces that that tie into it so from a developer standpoint i think that's something when you're when you have a game and you have an ip it's something to think about what that looks like right how how could you interact with a brand to help add extra monetization to your to your to your to your company to your studio um there's opportunities that exist Casper, this is more in your wheelhouse on ugc um but what effect do you think it will have on traditional game studios I think, I mean, there's there's two different ways to look at UGC, whether you're a UGC studio like we are, or whether you're looking to add a UGC component to your game. Coming out of the Fortnite ecosystem, I would definitely say that, I mean, our, our studio was born with uh, someone like Epic Games taking on UGC with Fortnite Creative, which effectively was their sandbox with no game dev sort of tools as you would find them now. But... UGC basically allowed Epic for infinite amount of content from the community. And they marketed it in a way I think was really, really cool because players were able to, you know, build the games that they wanted to play on their terms with their rules. And I think this just has infinite amount of opportunities for, you know, a thriving ecosystem of always having exactly what you want to play with your friends. So I, I think, and also looking at previous games that have been released for long time ago that might not be sufficient in today's gaming landscape i think there's so much ip that game studios like us might not really have to create if we could just use it and and create games with it um and like turning old ip into new games that fit in today's landscape i think that's a that's a that's exactly kind of where i sit on this as well i mean I think what Epic did with Fortnite is they set the stage for for game developers to how to get more players, right? I mean, Fortnite in and of itself was 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 a big game, big success all by itself, all standalone, and they could have left it at that, right? Um, they opened it up first originally to what what they called creator mode, where you could only interact with the existing op, uh, uh, assets within the game. Um, you're very limited as far as what you could do is for, from a great gameplay standpoint, but you could create your own worlds, you could build your own things, right? Um, and you know we don't necessarily i know we call it ugc um but you still have to be a developer to, to build this type of content right so it's it's really ugd that we're, we're developing now and i think the track is to get to ugc right like how do we get it to a point where the normal person you know my 13 year old can jump in and, and just start building their own world using using tools um and that is happening close. yeah it's that getting is close. literally happening <laughs> yeah uh and it's exciting um for for sure and i think that's an opportunity at least that's a channel that epic has, has been able to show all game devs that like hey your ip has value your assets have value they're not just limited to a game right to your game like you can you can expand it you can grow that you can let other people play with your 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 ip and grow your ip for you um next question is how is the concept of entertainment evolving in a tech driven world I think with entertainment, traditionally, it's always been TV, movies, music, sports. Um, I, what I find funny is that gaming is outpacing all of them. And so it is entertainment. But what are you, your thoughts on this, Nick? Yeah, I think we have to look at gaming like like it's media, right? I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, it, it, it is media. There's people in there. They're interacting with it. They're, they're touching it, um, right? And so if we think about it in that context, then we have to try to try to figure out you know, if they're going to spend their time there and they're entertained 
a little bit, how do we continue that entertainment, right? So whether it's a sports team like Stevenage doing something like what they did with, with Burger King, right? That's kind of upping their entertainment. They're able to promote that a little bit more to their audience. Um, their games now have more value intrinsically. Um, you can take that even further and, and go to things like Travis Scott inside of Fortnite, right? Where uh, I don't think they officially released the numbers, but but he sold, I think it was almost like, seven million dollars worth of merchandise right during that time period not obviously through the ecosystem but but through that time period was able to to, to sell seven million dollars worth of merchandise which for an artist you get paid by tickets and you get paid by my merchandise sales um and the last part on this is is we still enjoy story driven content and a lot of games are story driven content uh but they don't allow necessarily for me to have an effect or we're not traditionally used to interacting with that content in a way where we have an effect over it, right? We all watch our TV show, we binge it out until it's over, then we fall into a little bit of a depression because we're not going to be able to interact with that content anymore. The, the idea is, why stop, right? Like, why can't we interact with that content anymore, right? Like, why can't I go to Fortnite and interact with Stranger Things because it's my favorite show, right? Like, I should be able to do those things and potentially even have those things that I do within that environment affect the next release right have have the impact on what is actually being produced and how it's being produced right so canon events if we're all used to the spider-man multiverse right where canon events can happen that change the entire storyline um i think to me that's kind of the future of what we'll see in in episodic content yeah and then no that's good that's good i just i just wanted to add that i mean as recent that as earlier this month um quite literally there was a cinema stream streaming the the annual sort of like Disney um what do you call it event and they had um over a million concurrent users watching inside of a game instead of watching online on a web browser or anything so it's it's the whole thing of like you know finding the players where they are within whether it's within an experience within a game or whether it's in the game or wherever it is actually just touching them where they are is is something i think is 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 the future and um yeah, I, I, and I just point out to your to your point. So, like, Disney invested one billion dollars to become a partner with Epic. Lego invested one billion dollars to become a partner with Epic. Like, these are big numbers, right? These aren't you're like your average game studio is not going to be able to, to to do those types of things. Um, your average brand isn't going to be able to do t those types of things. Now, the interesting part with what you're saying too, with the the, the Disney launch um, inside of inside of UEFN, that's two D content being displayed inside of a three D world. Right. Yes. And what, ga with gameplay or game mechanics, right? Right. Like around 2D content. Right. So what I think we need to do is extract the 2D layer. Right. Convert it all to 3D. So it's it's 3D content that you're actually interacting with. So when we go back to the very first question of how do you define a game for years, that's what games have been doing. Right. It's giving you a storyline to, to interact with. Right. I know that Zelda is a great example of that. Right. It's been out for, for hundreds of years. Well, maybe not that long since the 90s. Right? It's been out for a long time. But if you follow the series, it's it's thousands of years that it's that it's been along. But none of those games actually tie together. And all the fans are always trying to force a timeline. Right. And there isn't really a timeline. So if if you go all the way back and you start Zelda in the beginning and you create a timeline. Right. That that's a never ending story that people have been interacting with um, and potentially affecting the, the outcome for the last 20 years. 23 years that that Zelda has been been going strong so great um so we have about five minutes for questions I'll definitely would love to open it up to the room one quick note we so Exola puts out a quarterly industry report with a lot of these insights we have profiles um and just a lot on trends and stuff this summer edition came out earlier this month you can and I'm probably in the way so that's really helpful uh, you can scan this QR code get the latest report and then the next one will be coming out in October um, but I would love to open it up for any questions that anyone may have. Okay, okay, okay great. Uh, you've already, Mike's there first. Uh, you've already touched it, uh, but I would like you to be more precise. So what could be the next big thing for passive gaming? I mean, not playing yourself, but watching others play or somehow be a part of uh, others play. So I think I think just to, to to confirm the question is not like so when we look at screen time today, right? We see that 
broadcast television, it has dropped. Um, we also see an increase in streaming, watching people watching streaming, and we see gaming, right? Um, so I think that's kind of your idea is that that streaming side, there's that that whole percentage of screen time that's being sent watching streamers. Um, you know, and, and I don't know that I necessarily have an answer. That's not where I spend a lot of my times, but one of the antidotes that I always go back to, right? Because as an adult, I tend to give my kids grief just like our parents did for playing video games for watching kids play video games, right? Like, why are kids watching kids play video games? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, you know, and what am I, my oldest told me one time was that, you know, it's, 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 it's no different than like, all right, you watch football, right? Why don't you play football? Well, it's because I'm old and fat, right? That's why I don't play football. And so, and I'm not very good at it. And he's, they're like, yeah, these are, these are the best in the world. They're really good at it. And just like video games, these guys are the best in the world. They're really good at it. So I think we will see some kind of like combination in there. I think streamers have the potential, right? I mean, we mix streamers and influencers pretty regularly. I think they're kind of in the same conversation. Um, and so, you know, they have the potential to, to really kind of be the next kind of host, if you will, right? Like if we look at a TV show, right? Like um, Jay Leno, I mean, I'm obviously from the States, if you couldn't tell from my accent. Um, you know, we look at a TV show like Jay Leno, he's a host. It, it ran for, for multiple years, right? People tuned in and watched it. I think we'll see that same thing with streamers, right? Like, and we do, but we'll, we'll see it narrow down. We'll see it more. I think that answers your question. Probably not even close, but, um, but that's my, my side. I don't know, Casper, if you have anything on the passive. No, it's, it's not where I spend most of my time. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, yeah. I think we have time for one more, maybe, if anyone else yeah. has any questions. No? Okay. Well, thank you all so much. We'll be outside for a minute if anyone wants to, to chat one-on-one, -on -one, but thank you guys.